course, you don't have to record your own audio. Many electronic musicians use samples and loops taken from records or downloaded or purchased from the internet. And if you have the jam packs that are bundled with the latest versions of Logic, you'll have access to many thousands of Apple loops which can also be imported into your projects. Let's have a look now at how to import these kinds of audio into Logic. Apple loops are special loops that can automatically match the key and tempo of your song. So let's have a look at the Apple loops library which can be accessed by opening the media sidebar at the right here. By the way, all the sidebars can be toggled to open and close if you need more space for your arrange page. So you can see that we're presented with a number of categories and you can select more than one to narrow down your search. You can also combine that with text search. Most Apple loops contain tempo information which allows them to automatically stretch to fit the tempo of your track. So listen to this one. Now I'll change the tempo of my song by double clicking the tempo in the transport and choosing a new tempo. Now the same loop has dynamically changed tempo to fit my track. That makes adding Apple loops to your tracks quick and easy because you won't have to worry about changing the loops tempos manually. Many loops can also change to fit the key of your song. First we have to specify what key our song is in. By default Logic chooses C major, but if I wanted to change that to say D minor, I can do that by going to Options and Open Signature List. And now I can switch keys using this drop down. So if I preview a harmonic loop, and then I change the key, you'll hear that the loop has changed to match. Note that this re-pitching can cause some degradation in the sound quality of the loop. The further away from the natural tempo and key of the loop that you go, the more likely you are to experience audio degradation. Also, if the loop is recorded in a major key, it can't adapt to a minor key. To get around that, you can use the filter at the top to display only major or minor loops. So, those 12-8 guitar arpeggios obviously were in a major key and I can't see them when I filter out uh, major keys. To bring an Apple loop into our song, all we have to do is drag it into the Arrange page. And you can drag them onto existing tracks, or you can drag to create new tracks. Logic's asking me if I want to use the tempo information from this loop to set the tempo of my project. If I hit no, the loop will be imported in the current tempo of my project. It's at this point that I should note that there are two different types of Apple loops. Blue Apple loops are audio loops and consequently they'll only work on an audio track. If you drag these to a software instrument track you won't hear anything. The other type of loop is a green loop. These are interesting because they contain both audio and MIDI data. If you drag them to a brand new track, they will set up a software instrument with accompanying effects. But if you drag them onto an audio track, they will magically switch to become audio loops. clever stuff. It's much easier to edit MIDI files than it is to edit audio, so if you'd like to change some of the notes or rhythms of your Apple loop, I'd recommend using the MIDI version of the loop wherever possible. That way you can easily create variations of the loop or change it entirely. Sometimes you may want to bring audio into Logic from external sources. For example, you might have downloaded a sound from the internet that you'd like to include in your project. 
Here's a sound that I've downloaded from one of my favorite websites, freesound.org. Freesound's a free repository of sounds which have a Creative Commons license, which means that you can use them in your music and if it's ever released, you won't have to pay royalties. So let's bring this file into Logic. There are a couple of ways to do this, but first we should make sure that our project is saved. Just as when you're recording, it's a good idea to save your project before importing audio. That way you can be sure that when you import a file into Logic, a copy will be safely stored in the project folder, so the original can't be accidentally edited or deleted. The easiest way to import a file is to simply drag it into Logic. Again, you can choose to put the file on an existing track or create a new track. Notice that Logic has created a stereo track for me because this is a stereo audio file. Be careful when importing files onto existing tracks because if you put a stereo file on a mono track it will replay in mono and will sound a bit different. An easy way in Logic to tell if a file is in stereo is to double click it. And in the sample editor if it's a stereo file you'll see two streams of audio. You can also import audio files by clicking File, Import Audio File. Or you can use the Media Browser sidebar. This essentially gives you a Finder window inside Logic, which lets you browse your computer's file system for media. You can preview a sound by highlighting it and pressing the spacebar. So now we know how to get regions into our arrangement, either by recording or importing audio. Now it's time to start arranging them, and to do that we're going to need to manipulate them, and in the next video we're going to look at how to do just that.